Jesus explains the forces of darkness, manipulation, calumny, teachers and shepherds. April 5th, 2016, words from Jesus through Sister Claire, spoken by Jackie. Jesus began, What is it to you if you are called names and calumniated with fabrications and lies? Does it matter, Claire? Truly, does it matter even in the least little bit? Well, it does matter in the sense that I now resemble you and what the Pharisees said about you. Yes, you've learned your lesson well. The bride must resemble the groom. Let them carry on, but you keep your eyes on me. Follow me. Oh, this is so highly pleasing to me. Do you know what truly good company you are in? The scripture says, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. That's Matthew 5.12. I thought about that and my heart just melted. As I know I'm not worthy to be included in that group. What an honor. But I said, Oh Jesus, you are so kind to me. But what about the little ones that are turned away and scared by these lies? Some I will convict that these are total lies, and some I will lose. Yet there are still doors into my kingdom that have yet to open. Pray for them, I will lead and guide them, but they must be sensitive. Do you know why you are most hated by your enemies? Because of discernment? That you teach others to come to me to learn how to discern is huge. But that is not what you are most hated for. They hate you for your love and the way you portray my love for you and for all souls. That is why you are most hated. You have broken down the walls of legalisms. Therefore people can no longer be manipulated by guilt. The powers of darkness have labored for hundreds of years to present me as a judgmental God who is constantly looking to the sins of the people and telling them they are guilty and have no hope. They have put a hook in the mouth of the people to manipulate them, to steer and to crush them. And you have taken the hook out and set them free by telling them and demonstrating to them my love is greater than their guilt, and my love leads them to repentance. It restores hope and leaves the enemy with no legalistic religious leverage to manipulate souls. This was the great sin of the Catholic Church, manipulation. I wanted souls to be drawn to me out of love, not fear. I lived my entire life without inspiring fear or guilt in the souls of all men and women. The only judgment I meted out was to the scribes and Pharisees, whose hearts were blackened by political and financial gain, even to the point of Baal worship. So how should they recognize me? They were of their father, the devil. So now, history repeats itself and those with a controlling religious spirit have found their way into every denomination with their lust for control. The entire game plan from the enemy is to make men feel so guilty for their sins they withdraw from me or refuse to even approach me. How common is it that you have seen and heard people say, I'm not good enough for God? When I get good enough for God, I'll turn to Him. And of course that never happens, and the religious spirit is the vehicle to do that. 
what I have taught you goes against that grain, and so you are hated. That I would treat you as my bride, with whom my heart is intimately entwined, and that I feel that way about all my people, is abhorrent to them. That I can live through you is still the most frightening aspect of true faith. God can live through men, and the devils cannot stop him. And men can be taught by God. That releases you from the yoke of slavery and self-interest man is so addicted to imposing through religion. It is written, and they shall all be taught by God. That's John 6.45. All through the scripture the espousal relationship is proclaimed, And if you are married to God and go to Him to live the life of faith, how can you be taught to follow man's ways? How can you be manipulated? For your Maker is your husband. That's Isaiah 54.5 And I shall take you as a bride unto me forever, and I shall take you to me in righteousness and in justice, and kindness and compassion. That's Hosea 2.19 And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. That's Isaiah 62.5. That is another reason that the demons toy with discernment and make the sincere believers seeking intimacy with me frightened of falling into error. Yet if a soul's heart is set on me, I will guide and lead them ultimately through every deception and impediment. If you trust totally in me, knowing that I will accomplish my will in your life, you will not abandon the path of intimacy when your discernment fails. Rather, you will humble yourself and draw ever nearer. You see, I established pastors and teachers to teach the people how to know, love and serve me, how to seek me until they find me, and to help them stay on the right path with mature leaders, assisting them to correct their course in life. I did not create pastors to hand-feed the flock and make themselves the only source of food. No, absolutely not. This is how error enters in. One man interprets for all the others and makes rules, which set up legalistic societies again, just like the Pharisees. Groups that rely on knowledge, politics, influence and control. No, pastors are created to father children, to help them grow in the faith and learn to hear and obey me, not to hear and obey man. Yes, obedience is useful for the extremely immature, but the good pastor will lead his flock to the water and allow them to drink at their own pace. Yes, he will bring forth from the storehouse of age the wisdom of God, but his first responsibility is to lead them to me so that I can pasture my flock. And then the Lord brought to mind Ezekiel 34. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, This is what the Lord says, Woe to you, shepherds of Israel, who only take care of yourselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the fat, clothe yourselves with the wool, and slaughter the choice animals but you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak, or healed the sick, or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays, or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. I shall make you cease feeding the flock so that you can no longer feed yourselves. I will rescue my flock from your mouth, and it will no longer serve as food for you. I will tend them in a good pasture, 
and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. That was from Ezekiel 34. Lord, this indicates that they will no longer be manipulated by guilt or fear, but rather loved and nurtured by you. That's the plan. I'm calling my shepherds to rescue my sheep from the shadows of guilt and the barrens of fear. I'm calling them to love the sheep and teach them how to seek me until they find me and how to feed off the pastures I lead them to. This you are doing and this is why you are hated, but never mind, all of that will soon come to a close. Just strengthen your resolve, Claire, and regarding the rapture timing, I've told you tiny increments, and that means minutes to me, any minute. The decision is still in my father's hands, but I know the door is closing, and he's the only one to say, enough. So find your peace in that, and cleave to me. Shall I say, it will be a surprise to us both? But for now, minute by minute, is all that remains.